We're good. We're off to the races. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to have you guys listen. Today is the last day on choices. It's part four, and next week we're going to start a whole new series. It's going to be a lot of fun because it's titled, It's Not Mine. So there's a whole bunch that's going to go into that. But today we are talking about choices, part number four. When we talk about choices, we want to be able to get in a place where we can watch the signs that God is showing us so he can lead us. And a lot of those signs come through things we see in the world compiled with dreams. So there's three major points. Point number one. You guys have never heard this phrase before, so I wanted this to be the first time you've ever heard it. God works in mysterious ways. I knew nobody had heard it before, so that's why we made it point number one. God works in mysterious ways. There are a lot of things that we look at in life and we start to go, well, I think we're headed in this direction. You know, one time we thought that we were going to get this one house, and so we went and Matt, and we were working on everything to get this one house, and they ended up saying, yeah, that's not the house for you, but we have this other house. And it ended up working out, and it was God working in a mysterious way. Because I can tell you that the other house I initially would have never picked, but my beautiful wife did, so, you know, these things all work out, but that's how it all works together. The Lord is working. He works in mysterious ways. Point number two. Dare to dream the dream. Dare to dream the dream. Sometimes the hard knocks in life and the things that start to hold us back, we start to bury our dreams. We stop looking at our dreams and we want to dare to dream them. Set out to purposely look for fulfilling your dreams. God didn't put dreams in your heart for no reason. That's part of his design, divine plan for you. And magically, magically, God sets things in motion to fall right into place. And point number three, now live the dream. It's not just about dreaming the dream, it's about living the dream. A few years ago, I started saying a saying. I used to just, I just, one day it just came upon me. People say, hey, how you doing? I say, Living the dream. Living the dream. And you know, you go to places and you can always tell if somebody's a half full or a half empty person by how they respond to you when you say, I'm living the dream. They go, oh yeah, more like a nightmare. Okay, that's a half empty guy. You're not going to go to him for advice. And then you go to somebody else and you're like, living the dream. And they're like, isn't it beautiful? Isn't it a great day? The mountains and everything. And you're like, now that person, that person has perspective. But really, in life, we set our destiny, and we set a level of our joy on how we respond. And we should be living the dream. But look at everybody in here. We have family, beautiful children, good jobs, homes. We're providing. We're living the dream. We really are. God is supplying it, and he's taking care of it. And there are other dreams that are inside you. That maybe you've, you've held back or you've repressed. And what we want to do is have the Lord show you how to let those go and live them. You get one life. Contrary to what some people believe, you get one life. And the Lord has a call for you and he wants you to live it. It says in John chapter 7 verse 17, Anyone who chooses to do the will of God, that's that dream. And he starts to put it in. And this will of God works in it together. And we talk about that in a lot of ways. We'll find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. It's really important to understand that, to internalize that. What do you have for me? We talked about that last week. Where's my direction going? And as we follow the Lord, he puts dreams in our hearts. Sometimes we want to run ahead of him. Kind of like when you take the kids for a walk. And you're like, please don't run ahead so far. Rattlesnakes, please, could you slow up? It's one of those things the Lord wants us to pump the brakes. But he doesn't want us to not have the dream. 
Any parent in the room knows it. You want to see your kids have something. You don't want to be like, well, I'd hate to see you ever have anything come true in your life. You need to learn how to be miserable now like the rest of us. Nobody wants their kid like that. Nobody does. God doesn't want us at that. But at the same time, you want your kid to listen. And you want them to follow. So you can protect them. So you can help them. Because what do you want them to achieve? The dream. But sometimes they don't know how to do it. Sometimes we don't know how to do it. We push and pull and we're going and going and I'm going to do that. The Lord wants to guide us. He wants to direct us. But it isn't because he doesn't want you to have the dream. And I want us to pull back and remember that because many, many, many times we begin to think if we see some sign, some wonder or something happened, that means I'm not supposed to have that dream. Caleb, Caleb, in the Bible, Caleb, 40 years he waited to have a mountain. 40 years to have that dream. It's a long time. Some of us are waiting a long time for a lot of dreams. Doesn't mean that God doesn't have it in mind. It just means he's protecting you and setting it up so it's perfect. And that's easier said than done. So point number one, God works in mysterious ways. When we want to see how God works, there are a lot of wild things God does that are unimaginable. In fact, many times throughout the Bible, there are signs and wonders that just kind of are jaw-dropping. I like to see the scientific approaches to these sorts of things in this day and age. And, well, you know, when the Israelites were crossing the Red Sea, that's because it was a shallow area. I don't know how Pharaoh's army drowned in the shallow area, but the Israelites made it through. I mean, just little things. Like, there, there's always these little pieces. They don't want to give you all the detail. You know, we're trying to figure it out. Just say, we don't know. Because God works in mysterious ways. So we go to Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 through 14. And so on the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Sun, sand still over Gibeon, and you moon over the valley of Aijalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped. Now, you and I both know, if we approach this with science, that people would go flying off this earth. So you want me to explain how that happened? The sun stood still and the moon stopped. That's what I know. Okay? You want me to start giving you all the kinetic energy and gravity and 32 feet per second per second, and I can't get all that. What I can tell you is the Bible said it stood still. And when it did, the nation avenged itself on its enemies. And it's written in the book of Jeshar. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There's never been a day like it before or since. And here's my question. How would we know? How are we going to prove that didn't happen? Well, science would say, no, no. We need to understand that there are miracles. And God works in mysterious ways. And there are just certain things that don't have an explanation. And the sooner we get to the place that we can stop trying to explain God away, the more those miracles will manifest in our life. Because miracles are valuable. And then, anyway, it goes on to say, a day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. You think that he doesn't listen to us? He says, come boldly to the throne with our prayers and our requests. You bet he listens to us. He'll move mountains for us. He'll make incredible things come our way. Incredible things to block us so we are protected, so we are safe. You ever hear people talk about these stories? Oh, this happened. Oh, that happened. I got struck by lightning once in my patrol car. Well, that was amazing. 
I was safe. I didn't get hurt. That was a miracle. I've heard of other people going through situations like that. They're in the hospital for days. Miracles happen all around us. We see it. And the Lord wants to make your dreams come to fruition. But sometimes we're trying to only let the Lord do it through the natural ways that we see. We got a mortgage on our house. It was a divine miracle from God. Literally went to a guy, broker, who said, you have less than a 1% chance of getting this house mortgaged. I said, okay, so there's a chance. I felt like Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> there's just a lot. I'm going for it. <laughs> but you know what? He gave me a miracle to tell people for years to come, for people that have been trying and they're trying to get their house financed or they're going through this and they're going, and I'm going, don't you give up because it happened to me. We got a mortgage, <laughs> unexplainable, unimaginable. There was no way it was going to happen. God gave us the right bank. God gave us the right specific banker who happened to know my family and went, We'll give you a loan. And that's all I needed. That's all I needed. Because there were things that had changed in the natural with the laws and the way they were reacting to mortgages that we couldn't simply get a mortgage. And God worked it out. It was a miracle. It was an absolute miracle. And I bet everybody can start to think about little things and go, yeah, I know about this. Well, I had that happen. So he works in mysterious ways. So don't discount when you start walking through things and go, well, I don't know if God will ever show up. You know, sometimes he does. If it's God's will, he'll help me today. That's at half empty. That's at half empty. No. No, he who has began a work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He's not messing around. He put things in everybody's path. Moses, he's, he parted a sea. Food fell from heaven. Jesus had a huge missions conference, if you will. And they fed 5,000 men. Lord knows how many women and kids were there. And they had food for everybody and food left over. When it's time for God to show up, it happens. There are miracles that happen all over. Look at this building. The fact that it still stands. The fact that we're going to celebrate 107 years this building's been standing this year. That's a big deal. That's a miracle. Especially with our wind out here. That's a miracle. That's, that's why we have fires holding spots and we gotta keep it that way. Keep it good and solid. But God built this and he's kept it going. And he breathes in this building. Point number two, dare to dream the dream. You know, when you're kids, you like to sit and play. My favorite thing was to sit and play Legos and to play with all the farm. Ertle implements I had, man, I'd get it going and I'd sit for hours. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And as time went on, people are like, why are you still playing with tractors? Why, why, are you, why are you still doing that? Aren't you a little old for that? You ever heard somebody tell somebody that? Aren't you a little old for that? Well, Reverend Killjoy, I'm almost 40 and I still like to sit down and play with those things. I just don't have any time anymore. The fact of the matter is, is we have people that start suppressing it. And you get these ideas. You know, I, I want to do such and such. I want to build this. I want to have that. I want to be able to do great things for people. And people come up with ideas, widgets. Little things they want to invent. Little things they want to do. People go, that'll never work. You know how many people are billionaires from people telling them that'll never work? How many people went, people are like, ah, oh, you should give up on that. Go try something else. No. No. But not only do we need to have the dream. Not only do we need to dare to dream the dream. But God speaks to us in dreams. He absolutely speaks to us. He shows us things that we never thought we would know. 
He shows us things that we thought, how do you do that? When I was looking at, into dreams, I started researching what science has said about dreams. Because, you know, I know what the Bible says. But I like to watch what science does because we're always trying to play God so that way we don't have to believe in him. And so scientifically, did you know, scientifically, they have found that people can solve math problems in their dreams? They show people issues ahead of time, give them a sleep cycle, and if they are dwelling on it and thinking about it, a certain percentage of people suddenly could solve these problems. They had mazes that they were able to then, after having looked at a maze and studied it, go to sleep, get up, and they could solve it. Math problems could solve it. Certain issues could solve it. God shows us stuff in our dreams. He absolutely does. He speaks to us in our dreams. And it comes in the Bible. And he gives his favor on us in dreams. I love to use the example of God's glory where you see these people with incredible talent. The little kids that can just sing. Or these people that can just draw. Never had a class. I have an aunt that could sit down and just play the piano, never had a piano lesson in her life. Doesn't even need the words, nothing. She just, okay. It's a glimpse of God's glory. She shows us stuff. He gives us stuff. And he gives us a lot of information in our dreams. And sometimes we try to suppress it. Because we also use dreams to get mad at people. We use dreams to... You know, you have a grudge or something's going on and you haven't gotten your heart right and then you kind of have a dream about somebody and you're telling them off and that sort of thing. Maybe God's trying to show you something there too. It's not just all about visions. But what I want us to understand is, is in these dreams, He shows us how to live. And He helps show us what to do from a dream to reality so we can live the dream. Now, that does not make sense, so we'll say it again. He shows us in our dreams how to fulfill our dream. He does. He shows us paths, people to talk to, things to do. There are all sorts of things that he shows us. Let's look at Daniel chapter 1, verses 17 through 20. We just talked about him recently. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. And why were these guys so big, but Daniel was the big, big deal? You know why? Because Daniel was being shown things in dreams, and he was tuned into it. He paid attention. It said, these four young men that I just named, gave no God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. You know why it says all kinds? Because some of us do get up after having certain dreams, shaking our head and go, what was that? <laughs> and I can't tell you the answer. I have no idea. But he does show us things. So Daniel could understand these. And at the end of the time set by the king, these guys were in tryouts. At the end of that time, to bring them into his service, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and he found none equal to Daniel. And Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The names changed a little bit in another chapter. But anyway, so they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. I can tell you specifically, in my life, there have been problems I have solved at work, <clears throat> situations that I have been in that I have had answers to, that people are like, how'd you know that? So the Lord just shows you things, and you just know. And when His favor is on you, and He's putting you in a direction, and He's guiding you, and you're able to solve a problem and nobody else is like, everybody's like, that doesn't make sense, that'll never work. That's because it's for you. God put it in your heart, not theirs. He didn't want them to know the answer. He'd have given it to them. 
The hardest thing for people to understand is when they don't know the answer in your life. Because we love to armchair quarterback everybody else. Well, let me help you. Well, let me tell you something. We need help. We need advice. We need helpers. We also know, need to know when not to listen to some advice. When not to listen to some helper. Because God has it for us. He gives us stuff. He wants us to know this information. And He wants us to know it Intimately. To feel it. To know that you know, okay, God's working here. And when you know it, and somebody else comes to you and says, yeah, that's nuts. We were working on our house. You wouldn't believe the amount of advice we got told. Just tear that thing down. You're not going to resurrect that thing. That is a money pit. Don't do it. We didn't have the money to do it. We didn't have the money to build another house. So, well, Lord, you told us. And then when I'm trying to fix the next problem and I have no idea how to fix it, YouTube and dreams. <laughs> no, I mean, it. I, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes YouTube helps, right? But there were many times I would sleep and all of a sudden I go, that's how I'm going to do this. That's how I, I had no idea how to put in a septic system. Not a clue. And it was just like the devil. Just like the devil, the day they come for inspection, my wife has a medical emergency. Just like the devil. And I'm sitting there trying to, and we're trying to do this, and the inspector's like, after they'd said, well, Mr. Lukens, you are our longest permit holder. <laughs> so I hold a record in Weld County for something, I guess. But the fact of the matter is, is I, I had no idea. And through little things and studying and God showing and just, you start to work on it. You're like, oh, I get it. Now I just do this. Oh, I get it. Now I, and when you looked at the problem at face value, you had no idea how to do it. But he walks us through in little steps because he has dreams for us. He has things for us. Every one of us has a knack at work. They're like, ah, oh, give it to Phil. He'll figure it out because I have no idea what to do. God gives us these little things. We do have something to bring to the table. So I see how important church is in us getting together and coming because we have something to bring to the table for everybody else. Because rest assured, there are going to be things that you are going to know that other people won't. It's true. There will be things that you can see, that you can fix, or that you can understand that other people won't. You know, my family, they had a neighbor, and they said, this guy can grow corn in concrete. He, could, he just, no matter what, he always had the best crop around. He could grow corn, and he just knew. He could just look at his plants. He just knew. And when God's favor is on you, you'll have these solutions. You will have these plans. You will just know. And that's what happened with Daniel. Daniel just knew. And Nebuchadnezzar was like, wow, that guy's brilliant. He's better than ever. Well, was it that he was just some genius? Or was it that the hand of God was resting on him? Because God had a plan for that nation. God wanted that nation to come to Christ, to come to the knowledge of the Lord. How did he do it? There's several signs and wonders in those four people. And they all got put to the test of death before all was over. Why do we have to go to the death part of things? Not saying we all have to get to the test of death, but we are to endure hardships. Doesn't mean the dream's not there. We are to ensure, endure trials and tribulations. It makes us better, not worse. It's not a half-empty thing. When you walk into somebody and say, how are you doing? I'm living the dream. And, oh yeah, it's a night. No, it's not a nightmare. Bad things do happen. It's frustrating when things don't go my way. I am working diligently in my own life on learning how to accept and understand 
When I have a setback, it's not a punishment. Because we live in a world where cause and effect means you did something good or something bad. Because if you do something good, you get a brownie. And if you do something bad, you don't get a brownie. And so when we live in life and we go, I do this and I get a brownie. And when I do this and bad things happen, so God doesn't want me to do that. No. God works in mysterious ways. See, God's ways are His ways. And they're not my ways. And His thoughts are not my thoughts. We have to remember that. We have to remember what He's doing for us. And the fact of the matter is, whether our kids will admit it, we are wiser than our children. We have what they call life experiences. And just... Pull back for a second and imagine this with me. Put yourself on the thought process that God's been around for a lot more years than all of us combined in this room. Do you think he has some life experience? Do you think he has some wisdom? And there are just simply things that we don't know and we don't understand. But it doesn't mean he doesn't want you to have your dreams. It doesn't mean that he's not walking you in a place toward it. He wants to protect you. He wants you to obey and he wants you to follow. But he wants you to have what he put in your heart. Every one of us have different favorite colors. Some of us, they may be the same. Every one of us have different desires on cars, on houses, on how we decorate. And it's different for a reason. Because he made us different. He wants us to have it. Now, point number three. Now, live the dream. Genesis chapter 41, verses 39 through 43. I like to talk about Joseph. Because Joseph grew up this young guy who had dreams. And he loved to tell everybody about those dreams. And it caused him a lot of trouble. And he really had a dream when all of a sudden he realized, hey, wait a second, my whole family's going to like be servant to me. So instead of humbly keeping that to himself, he went ahead and said, hey, guess what? I had a dream you guys were all bowing down to me. It was amazing. That didn't go well with the family. So the brothers did what they thought was right. They threw him in a well and then they sold him. That's what happened. Now think about Joseph for a second. He had the dream. The dream was in him. And then he went into slavery. Then he was falsely accused. Then he was imprisoned. Then he thought he had hope by interpreting somebody's dream, and that didn't work out. And he's sitting there in agony for years. The dream didn't go anywhere. Just like the dream inside you that you've been hoping for, praying for. It hasn't gone anywhere. It's still there. It's just a matter of time, discipline, and education for God to bring that forward. But if Joseph does a wonderful thing, he hangs on to it. And he hangs on to the gift. But the saddest thing is, you go to somebody's house that used to like make beautiful cross-stitch, or beautiful quilts, or maybe beautiful crochet, Beautiful woodwork. And you say, hey, I don't see you working on any of that. I don't do that anymore. Why? Yeah, it's just, I'm just, I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. I never could ever get the hang of doing the double back two stitch something or other. So I'm not doing it anymore. What? And it's easy for us to go, what? Your stuff is beautiful. I can't even begin to do that. And it's easy for us to right away judge, but wait a second. How many of us have that dream? Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm not bothering with it anymore. I always thought it'd be wonderful to go to Alaska and hike some mountain, but I'll never get there. I'm not going to do it. What do you... Wait, you don't know what's there. God put that in you for a reason. Are you sure? Are you confident? He puts things in our hearts for a reason. And we suppress it. But Joseph didn't. And this is what happens. Is one day, Pharaoh 
says, man, I'm having some disturbing dreams. We all had those. We talked about that. We get up and go, what was that? What did that mean? What is going on? So Pharaoh, it, it perplexed him, and he couldn't, he couldn't get an answer. So he ends up talking to the baker. Baker's like, hey, I remember this guy, you know, down in the prison. Yeah, bring him out. He'll bring him out. So, long story short, Joseph comes, and he interprets Pharaoh's dreams. And Pharaoh went, that, that's it. That makes sense. We call that affirmation. That's a sign. We all get those types of things. We get these little nuggets in life that God's showing us. So Pharaoh, he's like, this is awesome. And you know what Pharaoh does? He takes Joseph from being a prisoner to being second in the nation. And this is what he says. He says to Joseph, for as much as God hath showed you all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou. Thou shalt be over my house. And according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. You have this place. You're in charge of it. This is all yours. And he goes on to take him and have a little bit of a parade. Give him a ring. Puts a gold chain on his neck. Gives him nice clothes. It's a big deal we know back in those days. Bow the knee and set him over the land of Egypt. The dream came true. Didn't happen in a week. Didn't happen in three years. Happened over a course of several years. But the dream came true. We have to live the dream. Joseph went on to live the dream. And many of us are in a place. We're about to live a dream. But we're holding back because we're afraid to be hurt. You ever have something taken from you? You ever start to lay yourself out there and all of a sudden you get crushed? And you go, whoa, not touching that again. Don't want to go near that. But that crushing makes you better. The crushing makes you stronger. But don't give up on that dream. It's so important. So, three major points. God works in mysterious ways. We've got to watch for the signs and let God lead us. It says in Psalm 147.5, Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. He knows. He's working it. And we don't. So before you start to put things back in the corner, put things back on the shelf and say, Ah, I'm not doing that anymore. You need to remember, you don't know. And trust that you don't know. The unimaginable does happen. The unthinkable does happen. The miraculous does happen. We, we see it all the time. Are we taking the time to look at it? Are we taking the time to recognize it? Point number two, dare to dream the dream. You've got to think about it. Think about your dream. I challenge you this week, everybody in here, to, why do I have my finger up for two? Not for peace. Before you go to bed, 15 minutes before you go to bed this week. I know everybody gets on their hands and knees and prays beside me. No, I'm kidding. I'm just saying, before you go to bed, 15 minutes before you go to bed, I want you to write down two things a piece of paper that are your dreams. I want you to think about them and I want you to pray about them and then I want you to go to sleep. And I want to see if the Lord shows you anything. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to share it next week in church. No one's expecting some little show and tell report. But I'm telling you, watch him work in you. It'll happen. You will see something. You will get a nugget. You will get a sign. It happens because the Lord shows us because He fulfills the desires of our heart. If the same thing that you write down every day is the same thing, fine. 
but pray about it and dwell on it. He is going to show you a path to your dream. He will. Absolutely. So, 1 Corinthians 3, 6 says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. He's going to put a seed in you. And we'll all work together and help him water you and care about you and, and feed into your life. God, he'll make it grow. That's how it goes. Point number three, now live the dream. Live the dream, I pray. So, for me to have anything to say, I want to say Numbers chapter 6, 24 to 26 over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Because as you walk and live the dream, the greatest scripture that you can remember as you're doing this, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, those are hard ones. I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You mean that we're going to get a still eat and we're going to survive? We will survive. You anoint my head with oil. That's his favor. That's his protection. My cup overflows. That's your provision. You'll have it. Surely goodness and love will follow you all the days of your life. And you get the reward at the end to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So God put a seed in your heart. Your job is to protect it. His job is to grow it. You need to trust it. Will you please stand with me? We as the Car Community Church will always present Christ's open doors of heaven to everybody. If you'd like to make Jesus your Savior, you simply say, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Come into my heart and I'll serve you with all my ability. If you prayed this prayer, we believe you have begun the Christian transformation. If you want to know more, it's simply like prayer. Feel free to come up during the last song. Lord God, our Father, we come to you, Jesus. We ask you to keep our dreams alive. Help us to uncover the beautiful things that you've put in us and continue to grow them and bring them to fruition. Lord, I pray your favor, your anointing, your provision, and your joy over everybody. May our week be blessed and anointed. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And seven, I'm sorry, we are um, singing the same song as last week. Apologize. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to tell Devin. <laughs>